So in an earlier lecture, we spoke about one form of energy known as kinetic energy. And we said that kinetic energy of an object is simply the energy of the motion of that object. So if an object that has a certain mass m and has a certain velocity v, we can find the kinetic energy of that object by simply using our formula 1 half times mass times velocity squared. Now, a different form of energy exists known as gravitational potential energy. So, different forms of potential energy exist, but in this lecture we're going to focus primarily on gravitational potential energy. So, let's begin. A force that acts on an object to raise that object a certain distance above the surface of the Earth can store energy in that object in the form of potential energy known as gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy depends on the mass of the object, the gravitational constant that is a result of the gravitational pull of the earth on the object, as well as our change in displacement of our object, change in position of that object, as we'll see in just a moment. So let's suppose we have a box with some mass m, and we pull that box along our y-axis a certain distance h, a certain displacement h. So our initial position of the object is on the ground, h naught, h naught equals zero meters. And we move our object a certain distance along the y-axis to a final position of h1. So our pull, our force that acts on our box points in the same direction as motion, in the same direction as displacement. And we want to calculate how much work is done on the box by our hand. So recall that work is a transfer of energy. So when we're pulling on the box along the y-axis, what we're doing is transforming or transferring energy into our box. So we're storing energy in the box and this stored energy is known as gravitational potential energy. So let's calculate how much work is done, how much energy is transferred into the box as our hand does work on the box against the force of gravity as we pull our box upward. So because the force is constant, we can use the following equation. Work equals the dot product of force times displacement. Now our force is m times g because we're making the assumption our object is not accelerating as we're pulling our object up. So that means the force with which we're pulling on the box is equal to m times g. So force, the magnitude of force of the pull is m times g, our displacement is simply d, and because we're taking the dot product, we have to multiply by the cosine of the angle between the force and our displacement, which is simply cosine zero, because they point along the same direction, at, in the same direction. So cosine zero becomes one, we're left with m times g, and our distance is h, so m times g times h. So the work done on the box due to our pull of the hand is equal to m times g times h. And another way of representing W is simply U. U represents gravitational potential energy. This is how much energy was transferred into our box, how much energy was stored in our box when we moved our box from the ground to this height H1. Now, normally, we like to talk about the change in our gravitational potential energy. And that's given with the following symbol, delta U or change in U. So this is simply given by mass times G times change in height. So for example, if our final height is H1, our initial height is H0, we could simply represent our change in H in the following way. And if we multiply these out, if we distribute mg, we get the following equation. So the change in our gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh1 minus mgh0. Now in this case, we assume our h0 to be zero, so that's why this term cancels. But that's not necessarily true all the time. So 
Uh, whenever we talk about kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, we usually talk about uh, a transfer or a transformation in energy. So gravitational energy has the ability of transform to different types of energy. And in fact, in general, energy is this one concept that exists and energy can be transformed into different types. For example, we have elastic potential energy, mechanical potential energy, gravitational potential energy, electrostatic potential energy, and so on. So let's look at one very common example. Let's suppose we have a box, and that box is some distance h above a nail. Now, if we take the box and we let go of the box, what happens is the box begins to accelerate as it travels downward. And because the distance begins to decrease, the gravitational potential energy of the object begins to decrease because our gravitational potential energy depends on the distance or height h. So as the object is traveling downward, its gravitational potential energy is decreasing because it's being transformed into kinetic energy, into the energy of motion, because our object begins to gain velocity. So, uh, our change in gravitational potential energy is equal to mg change in h, which is equal to one half mv squared. In other words, at the top, our object is stationary and it has no kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is zero because velocity is zero. Now, right before it hits our nail, assuming this axis where the nail begins is the reference axis, so this axis represents a height of zero, right before it hits our uh, nail, the gravitational potential energy has completely transformed into kinetic energy. So at this point, when h is zero, all the gravitational potential energy has transformed into kinetic energy. And at that point, we can use the following equation to find the velocity of the object. So velocity of the object is equal to, well, the m's cancel, we bring the two to this side, and we take the square root, and we see that velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times g times change in h. So let's look at the following example. Let's suppose we have a 300 gram box that is placed a distance of 10 meters below uh, a spring, or actually this should be above a spring. Uh, so the box is placed above a spring with a constant, a spring constant of 300 newtons per meter. So we're neglecting the gravitational force during the compression of the spring and we want to find the following three things. So we have a box that's released from a distance of 10 meters above a spring and when the box hits the spring, it will do work on the spring to compress that spring a certain distance. And we want to find A, change in gravitational potential energy, B, the velocity of the box before impact, and C, how much does the spring display. So let's begin with A. We want to find the change in gravitational potential energy when the object with mass 300 grams moves a distance of 10 meters. So our change in gravitational potential energy as given by this formula is equal to mg change in h. Now m is 0.3 kilograms, g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and change in h is simply 10 meters. We plug that in and we find uh, a change in gravitational potential energy of 29.4 joules. So this much energy goes into increasing the motion of the object. So that's how much energy is transformed into kinetic energy when the object falls that distance. Now, right before impact, all this energy goes into increasing its velocity. And to find the velocity, we simply use this formula. So velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by the change in h, 10, and we get 14 meters per second. So right before impact, this is the velocity of the object. Now using this, let's calculate how much the spring displaces. So this much energy goes into displacing our spring, so this equals one half kx squared. 
So we bring the 2 over, divide both sides by k, and take the square root, and we find that our spring displaces a distance of 0.44 meters.